The intent of this video is to review the B-17 Bomber's anti-flak wearable armored garments. The crew member's armor gear is designed to help reduce penetrations of both ground artillery flak projectiles and German fighter interceptor 20mm autocannon high explosive mine round splinters. The flak armor consisted of an M3 flak apron attached to an M1 flak vest and the M3 helmet. Both the flak vest and aprons were armored with hundreds of overlapping 2 inch by 2 inch thin steel plate inserts. Bomber crew helmets will be covered in a separate video. A June 1943 Army Air Force study reviewed the results of 303 bomber crew member wounds. The results of the study indicated that the source of the wounds were 20 millimeter cannon shell fragments, 39%, ground artillery flak projectiles, 38%, machine gun bullets, 15%, and what they called secondary missiles, like pieces of the aircraft, were 8%. The study concluded that low velocity projectiles accounted for 79% of the wounds. Bomber crew flak suits were designed to reduce the penetration of these low velocity projectiles like 20 millimeter splinters and ground artillery flak, not high velocity bullets. This crew member is wearing very cumbersome experimental leg armor that was not adopted in service. Let's cover a couple flak suit factoids. Flak suits were introduced in service in March of 1943. The suits were very effective. They are credited with a reduction of 60% in the total number of combat related wounds. The M3 apron section was suspended from the vest to provide coverage for the abdomen, groin, and upper thighs. The crew armor is capable of withstanding a 45 caliber pistol bullet fired from 30 feet. They are designed with a quick release cord in case of emergency. The total crew armor weighed 25 pounds, 7 ounces. The design properties desirable for the flak armor insert material include high strength, high impact resistance, and maintaining high material toughness, all at low temperatures. Toughness is the ability to absorb energy in the plastic range without rupture. A nine millimeter pistol bullet was fired at the steel strap. We can observe lots of deformation in the material's plastic range. The steel plastically deformed and absorbed the bullet's energy without failure. This steel strap exhibited high toughness. The flak vests and aprons are fabricated from overlapping 2 inch by 2 inch 036 gauge steel inserts. The inserts are made from a Hatfield steel. Hatfield steel is 13% manganese steel. It's the same type of steel adopted by the standard U.S. Army World War II steel pot helmet. The insert density of the overlapping steel armor inserts are shown here. The overlapping steel inserts are sewn into the garment's burlap pockets, which provide the crew member some degree of flexibility, although ball turret gunners rarely don flak suits due to the confined crew station. A B-29 crew member is putting on his flak vest and apron and removing his flak vest and apron by pulling on the quick release handle. Ever notice that geared up bomber crew photos rarely show them posing with their flak suits? Part of the ground crew's responsibility is to deliver flak suits inside the B-17 at their crew stations prior to takeoff. The flak suits were transported to the plane by the flak shack wagon as shown here. A collection of ground artillery flak projectiles is shown in this view. These are the type of low velocity projectiles that crew flak armor was designed to stop. The flak 
panel insert shows signs of a major impact due to its deformation. The display's placard says more Allied aircraft were destroyed by German anti-aircraft guns than fighters in World War II. We'll come back to this statement shortly. Here's a couple images of flak vests stopping projectiles. This chart graphs the distributions of bombers lost over Nazi-occupied Europe. The x-axis represents the month and year. The y-axis represents the number of U.S. heavy bombers destroyed. Three sources of losses include flak, fighters, and others. Losses in the others bucket could be from pilot air, collisions, landing incidents, occurring during combat missions. The trend of the data shows that fighters destroyed more bombers up to May 1944. After May 1944, more bombers were destroyed by flak. Many reasons for this factoid, which will be discussed in a later video. The data indicates flak was responsible for 45% of all destroyed bombers, fighters were responsible for 40% of all destroyed bombers, and the remaining 15% bombers were destroyed by other. Okay, I understand this chart may not be readable. See the YouTube video description for a link. The link will allow you to view, print, and or download all of the pages shown in this video in a high quality PDF file, all for free. Let's talk briefly about the German MG-151 20 mm autocannon mine round versus flak suits. Since this is an important topic, I will release a future video dedicated to the 20 mm mine cartridge. The Germans found out pretty quickly to bring down a B-17 or B-24 heavy bomber. They needed more punching power than a couple of the 7.92 mm machine guns. The answer was the MG-151 20mm autocannon firing the high explosive mine round. Germans observed from interceptor gun camera footage it took about 25 hits of the 20mm projectile to take down a heavy bomber. This display shows the German 20mm cartridge, a cutaway of the cartridge, and the 20 millimeter projectile on its way to a target. The high explosive mine round projectile is hollow and contains about 20 grams of a high explosive fill. This fill represents about one third the explosive fill contained in a World War II pineapple style hand grenade. This image shows a detonation of a 20 millimeter mine round as it showers low velocity small splinters in all directions. A flak apron or vest should be able to stop these small splinters. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.